Today, I'm in part of the country as popular with tourists as with house hunters spanning no less than six counties. And this big fella here, Claudius, he's one of the main reasons why this area of England is so coveted. With his forefathers' wool providing the foundations for a remarkable architectural legacy, his backyard is one of the most sought-after escapes to the country. In today's show, I'll be helping an interior designer and her partner escape London life for a breath of fresh air in the country, and immediately practical concerns emerge. I'm just thinking how expensive it's going to be in curtains. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be showing them some fantastic country homes with a few surprises. That is just the icing on the cake. <laughs> And, of course, there's the mystery house, but will any of the properties match their country dream? Today, I'm in the Cotswolds, and in medieval times, this fella's ancestors were well-known throughout Europe for their heavy fleeces and high-quality wool. With Cotswold wool commanding the very best prices, wealthy traders were able to invest in the local area, building beautiful houses and stunning churches, known as wool churches made from Cotswold limestone, another characteristic of this area, seen nearly as much as my four-legged friend here. The largest of the 40 areas of outstanding natural beauty in England and Wales, the Cotswolds lie across several counties. On the western outskirts sits the Cotswold Edge, a steep slope leading down to the Severn Valley. It's one of the most desirable places to live in the country, with property prices to match. From modest cottages to grand houses, it's the honey-coloured limestone that defines the local architecture. The discerning residents are well served by the plentiful selection of enticing shops and eateries spread across the attractive small towns and villages. It's also a hot spot on the tourist map, bringing in millions of visitors every year. As the new playground for celebrities such as Elizabeth Hurley, Kate Moss and Kate Winslet, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the Cotswolds was out of the financial reach of mere mortals. But although this is a very expensive part of the country, the good news is there's never been a better time to move here. With house prices dropping a whopping 19% since they peaked in the summer of 2007. To you and me, that means a country cottage would cost around £440,000 at the peak and has now dropped to around £350,000. So, what should you buy? Have a look at some of these. If your budget is £1.95 million, you could be viewing this three-bedroom converted dovecot in Southrop. The stylish refurbishment has been sympathetic to the original building, retaining many of its appealing features. Alternatively, this typical Cotswold stone cottage in Temple Guiting is up for grabs at £550,000. The heart of the three-bedroom home is 18th century with all the features you might expect and the modern extension provides extra space for family living. And finally, how about this two-bedroom cottage in Borton on the Hill on the market for £396,000? The interior incorporates a mix of modern design with more traditional features and the garden was certainly no afterthought. Today's buyers may well be house hunting here at the right time, but will their budget match their expectations? Let's find out. Our buyers today are interior designer Karen and accountant Gary, who live in a three-bedroom maisonette in London's Little Venice. When they bought the property seven years ago, the layout didn't work for them, so with a keen eye for design, they undertook a mammoth renovation project. It was a six-month project, and Gary tried to keep me away from the flat because it was such a hellhole. Six months later, it was the home of their dreams. We have um, the big through lounge upstairs, which is our lounge and kitchen and dining area, and the downstairs area has um, the three bedrooms, which leads out onto our garden. Um, originally, it was £400,000. The refurbishment cost was, what, about 70000 70, It's been a um, labour of love. We've loved really doing it. But, like anything in life, you know, sometimes there reaches a point where you've got to move on. I would hope in the current market a realistic valuation of probably about 
850 to 900,000 pounds. But for Karen, the move may be harder than she thinks. I have lived in this road for 26 years. Two of my best friends live in this road. Um, and it's very much a community. I have very mixed emotions as much as I love London. I'm finding it too fast now and too polluted. I want to be able to open up my doors and just breathe the country air. This escape to the country is driven by Karen's growing interior design business. This is currently what I'm using as an office space, stroke studio, come workroom, and an office for Gary. I need to be able to have shelving, floor to ceiling, bales of fabric, wallpaper banks. I've so outgrown this. I'm, I'm desperate for a big space. And Gary has designs all of his own. Yeah, as you can see, it, it's a nice sized garden, but uh, we've got neighbours either side, and whilst they're very nice and we get on with them, you know, it is nice to come out, sit down, and just hear nothing. And we're hoping that that's what a country house is going to give us. So what does their shortlist comprise of? I think it's a minimum of three bedrooms. A nice sized living room, kitchen or kitchen and dining room, doesn't really matter. It's something um, with character. The only modern build we would look at. Lots unique, of glass. Unusual building with lots of glass and lots of light. We haven't really done too much research. 18 months ago, we went to visit some friends that were staying in the Cotswolds, and we both really loved it. We thought it was a really... You know, quite a special place, really. Karen and Gary have put their heart and soul into their maisonette. Now it's time to find out if it's paid off. I think this flat's in an enviable position. It's white stucco, it's right on Little Venice, it's a garden maisonette which everybody wants. I would value this property at £900,000. It's a very decent valuation. We're happy, very happy. Yeah, our budget for looking for this property is going to be in the range between £700,000 to £800,000. As Karen and Gary are looking for a house to replace the home they've spent the last seven years pouring their love into, I think they're going to be quite difficult to please. However, they're both the creative type, so hopefully they're going to be quite flexible. Essentially, what they're after is a detached house with bags of character and three bedrooms. Bright, airy reception rooms with high ceilings and definitely no beams. Enough space for their beautiful furniture and the knickknacks they've collected from around the world. And ideally, an outbuilding which they can convert into an office, keeping work and play separate. Karen and Gary are flexible regarding location, so we're concentrating our search close to Stroud. Over the course of two days, I'll be taking them on a tour of some desirable homes, but as ever, I'll be leaving them in the dark as to the prices until after the viewings. Our final stop will be the Mystery House, which always aims to offer something a little bit unusual. Hi, Karen and Gary. Hi, Nikki. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Nikki. Welcome nice to, to you. the Cotswolds. Thank you. Thank you. So you're looking forward to it? Really excited, actually. Very much, really yes. excited. Now, you don't want chocolate box, do you? And the Cotswolds is known for its chocolate box beauty. Then we need to find the other side of the Cotswolds. I'm sure there's lots of other beautiful houses that are not too chocolate box. And ideally, Karen, you want to use it as your office as well. It would be great to have either garages that I could potentially convert or an outhouse or a granny annex, anything like that that I could use as a studio. Now, Gary, I hear you're quite laid back. Are you going to be getting excited about these properties? Well, let's hope so. I'm not going to say I'm going to jump up and down and wave my arms in the air, but you will see some emotion and if I like it you'll know I like it. And who's going to make the final decision if you find your ideal dream property in the country? We both do. Oh, we yeah. both will, yeah. I like to think I wear the pants but in truth... It's a joint effort? It is, it, it is, is yeah, yeah it, is. it has to be. That's good, well we've got some amazing properties for you to see over the next few days and of course we've got the mystery property so lots to consider all on a budget of £800,000? Yes. Correct. OK, so we're going to be working to that. So shall we get started? Great. Let's get Good. started. Armed with a generous budget of £800,000, Karen and Gary are looking for a property with plenty of period character, although a typical Cotswold cottage is definitely not on their wish list. They would like a good-sized living room, a minimum of three bedrooms and an outbuilding to house Karen's growing interior design business. So both of you, well, especially Karen, over 25 years living in the same road, surely making this move is going to be a huge wrench. It's, it's going to be 
a very big wrench um, and it's a decision that we've been mulling over for quite some time now and the reality of it is that my business is growing and I, I need space. We're starting our property search in Chalford, a small village four miles from Stroud. This beautiful village is typical of the area with many houses built in the warm honey tones of the local stone. The village lies beside the Thames and Severn Canal, which dates back to 1789 and played an important role in the local cloth trade. Today, the paths offer the perfect place for a relaxing stroll. So here is your first property. This is a house and a half. This is absolutely Very nice. beautiful. Very nice. Really? And I said I wasn't going to use that word, nice, as well. But That's it. That's the last time you're going to use nice. The first and last time I'm going to use the word nice. And you, are you a big fan of the sash windows, the original sash Love windows? Love the sash windows. I'm just thinking how expensive it's going to be in curtains. <laughs> Practical, I like that. Yes, but you're the best See, person I'm normally the practical person. That's the first time she's been practical in years. Do you intrigued to have a look inside? Oh, can't Absolutely. wait. Let's go. Come on. So here's the entrance hall. For such an imposing front, didn't expect stairs to be right here and quite a small staircase. So immediately I feel... Everything's kind of closing down once you get inside, but I've got an open mind. Well, let me take you through to the okay. main reception room. Well, lovely neutral colours, love that. Yes, good size, good Makes size. Makes it bright and, Not you know, big. airy. Love the fireplace. Yeah, the place is lovely. It's big, gives it space, which is really nice. I like the feel in this room. I feel like I could sit down, have a cup of tea and relax. It's homely. You could sit down and have good. a cup of tea anywhere. Well, <laughs> Great, things are getting better, but Gary's going to need somewhere to make the tea. So will that homely feel continue in the kitchen? Instinctively, I'd, I feel a bit let down by the kitchen. It's quite small. And what do you think of the splashbacks? They're funky. I like them. It just feels small. And it seems not quite big enough for a dining table and the kitchen is one here. I like a really big refectory table. It would be interesting to see if there's any other workable space in here that we could actually use as a, a dining room. Before we leave, there's an extra pocket of space at the end of the kitchen, which is currently used as a utility room. And just next door of the hall is the second of the three reception rooms. It might be a bit of a squeeze for their dining table, but it's light and bright, so could make a good study. And there's more to come. So you've got a downstairs cloakroom there. OK. But through here, this might answer your problem. Oh, I love this room. This is... This is, this yeah. is, a, this is so far, I think, Best my favourite room. So room. Yeah. yeah. That's a fabulous bay window, isn't it? Mm. Gorgeous. Potentially, you could have this as a dining room. We could. It, I think it would work really well as a dining room. I think the lovely thing here is that you could move in, for me, and I could just put down my furniture without putting paint on the wall and getting rid of carpets, it's all really neutral, it's all livable. Overall, that's quite a positive response for the downstairs and there's two more floors to go. At the top of the stairs is the family bathroom and then there are three double bedrooms of various sizes, enough to accommodate their visiting friends and family. But I'm hoping they'll like the fourth bedroom I've saved for them. So here's your master bedroom. It's a very nice space, a very good space. And high ceilings. And high ceilings, yes. Notice that as we came in and you've got the views. That is a fantastic view to wake up to every morning. Yeah, that's beautiful. And then just through that door, Ooh, take a look, Gary. Secret, go on. Go on, it won't bite. <gasps> Yay. The ensuite. The ensuite. So again, not the largest ensuite in the world, but workable. Yeah, functional. It's, yeah. it's got everything you need up here. It's I mean, everything. you've got good light. You've got great size room. I'm happy. Good. I like it. Excellent. All that remains then is space for Karen's business. So although this isn't an outbuilding, it is quite separate to the rest of the house. Wow. And just look at that space. I'm thinking that could be an office. But this is what I'm excited about. Because if you want room for swatches and samples of cloth, You've got this room, and then through there, you've got an identical room of the same size. Oh, my goodness, that is a big space. God, and it's light again. They do like their windows, but 
It's good. It's, it's fantastic space. It's exactly what I need. The only downside for me is that I so desperately wanted to have it away from the main house. Is that for a mindset so it that is. you can separate the yes. two? Yes. I feel that I, I definitely need that dividing line. That's a fair point, but to get everything they want, Karen and Gary may need to make some compromises along the way. All that's left is the outdoor space. Who's the gardener in the relationship? Me. Are you? This is about probably as much as I, I would manage. And you still have that wonderful panoramic view, which is, is spectacular. We couldn't do an outbuilding for you, for your uh, business, but we have got you a little cave in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's as much as we can muster. And you've also got the garage there, which is big enough for a small car. I was going to say, you've got space above it as well. You could build up. So you could have a studio stuff. there, in fact. Yeah. It has loads of options, yeah. actually. It certainly does. That's a great idea. Well, let's take a look up from okay. the vantage point, looking okay. back at the house, because that's all food for thought. It is. So all is not lost with this house, but how much will a property like this cost? It's now crunch time. How much do you think this is on the market for? Well, I had a thought earlier on, and I'm going to stick with my original thought, because I do say that's what you should do. I'm going to say 750. 750,000. Karen? I would say slightly lower. No outhouses. 695. You're going to say a lot more, aren't you? I'm going to slightly <laughs> disappoint you on this one, I think. It's actually on the market for 800000 Is it? Mm. I'm slightly surprised it's that much, I have to be honest. Do you fancy having one last look around the property? That would be really good, yeah, actually, yeah. if we could just, on our own, yeah. just have a little mooch yeah. around. Have rooms, a good yeah. explore, and I'll catch up with you in a minute. Lovely, okay. thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank you. Karen may be shocked by the £800,000 price tag, which is at the top of their budget, but this handsome property does have three reception rooms, four bedrooms, three attic rooms, and a garage that could be converted or extended to accommodate the business. Karen and Gary are looking forward to the slower pace of life in the Cotswolds and are keen to soak up as much of this area as possible. So, during their visit, they took a trip to Borton on the Water, Regarded as one of the prettiest villages in England, it straddles the river Windrush, and with its series of attractive low bridges and neat riverbank, it's certainly the picture of elegance. I mean, this is beautiful. I mean, we wouldn't miss all to a little Venice. We'll have our own little Venice in the country. It is like a mini Venice in the Cotswolds. It is. It's and all the baths as well. Really pretty. The Cotswolds enjoy an architectural style all of its own, noted for its characteristic steeply pitched roofs and dormer windows. Many of the pristine buildings in the distinctive Yellowstone date back 300 years. It's an affluent, stylish area, and the well-heeled residents, including some famous faces, could provide Karen with a new customer base. I think it's absolutely stunning. I don't know whether it would be viable for us to have a business here. We just need to investigate it a bit more. Um, but I could certainly, 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 100% live here. We continue our journey heading towards the outskirts of Nailsworth, four miles from Stroud. The town grew up around the 18th century cloth trade. Today, it's a thriving hub with a wide selection of shops, cafes and pubs, popular with the locals and the tourist trade. Our next property is Grade 2 listed, so let's see what they make of it. So let's go up onto the patio, because I really think this is the way to see this impressive house. It's lovely. Gorgeous windows, lovely stonework. It's got, it's, it's got lots of character, lots of bags of character. Yeah, nice first impressions. Mm. And this is all south-facing, so you're getting all the light the afternoon and the evening, and also here the patio as well. So this could be quite a sort of a good entertaining yeah. space. Mm, definitely. Mm. So you're keen to have a little look inside? Really keen, very, very keen. OK, let's take a look. The exterior has grabbed their attention, but how will the entrance hall fare this time? Come on in. <clears throat> now, I'm looking at your face, but I'm not sure if I'm reading it right. <laughs> Karen, talk to me. Um, straight away, instinctively dark. I just would have expected a wider, bigger space here with more light. Gary? If I, at this stage, I think I'd say... Well, let's have a look around and see what else it's got to offer. If you said to me right now, let's go and not look around the house, I'd be off. 
I've got my work cut but out I'm not. for me. I'm not. We're I'm not going to give up. No, I'm going to be positive. I really want to be positive and I'd like to see the rest of the house. Stay with me, Karen, because this property does have lots to offer. So you want quite a large kitchen diner. Yes. Good space. Nice, yes. through, open, entertaining, cooking. Lovely. Nice floor. You like Gorgeous. The floor? Yes, lovely. You've got the range there for your cooking. Lovely. A double butler sink. Mmm. Size wise and layout, it's lovely. And you've got nice big windows, which is good. This is this is better. This is much lighter. Um, and I feel like I'm no longer in a basement. Right. That's a relief. At the back of the kitchen is a utility room and a cloakroom with the bonus of a shower. Next for us, though, is the sitting room. I love the room. I think it's it's again it's a good size. It's an airy feel in here. You've got the oak floor. Mm. Yeah. Do you like a bit of natural flooring? I like a bit of natural flooring. That actually is a Georgian grate in the fireplace. I don't actually like the surround of that fireplace. Busy. I, too it, busy. It's too busy, but I, lo I love the inside of it. You like the grate? I do, mm. just, for, just sort of for detail in the room. Let me take you through to the other reception okay. room through mm -hmm. here. Sort of currently being used as a den. Just seems a little bit strange to have this little room off of the main lounge. It's not really working for me. It's not one thing or another. Um, one thing you could consider, obviously you'd need to get all the planning permission because mm. it is grade two listing, yes. is actually take that wall down and then having all of this yeah. as a huge reception space. Then it'd be really impressive. And then you get all that light coming yeah. through. And the other two windows. Yeah, that, yeah. Would be, that would be absolutely beautiful. So there are ways to improve this space. Back off the hall is access to a wine cellar, although I'm not sure it comes fully stocked. Upstairs, there are six bedrooms over two floors. On the first floor, there are three doubles, each with fabulous large windows, allowing plenty of natural light to flood in. So this is the largest of the three double bedrooms on this floor. Lovely proportions, because it is Georgian. Lovely double aspect window. Um... There isn't an ensuite in this bedroom. I know mm. you really wanted one. That door through there, that's actually sort of cupboard space. You know I'm not jumping up and down, don't you? You're very good at letting me know straight away, Karen. It's body I language. I can see it straight away. I think it's just so far, the house doesn't flow for me. I can't imagine us, our things, our friends, our family in this house. I'm getting the idea they want a character property but with a more urban interior. I wonder what they'll make of the bathroom across the landing. I love the old-fashioned Maltop bath. Love it, freestanding. I mean, for me, it's the nicest room so far, which is a bit bizarre to say that of a bathroom, but... Yeah, I'd second that. I would say this would be my favourite room. Well, that's great news. I found a room that you really yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> it is the bathroom. All we need is a telly on the wall and a fridge down there and we could live in here. <laughs> that's it. Well, that would be one way of living, Gary, but there are three more bedrooms on the next floor. One of them is a double, and there are two singles, one of which has an ensuite. Finally on our tour is the outdoor space. So the property stands in about an acre, so this is all your land here. I mean, you do have views of the factory, but in the summer, those trees would probably cover that up. But the one thing you can't get away from is the main road down there. What's that, Nikki? <laughs> the what? That road and the factory over here is just kind of clinched it for me, really. Doesn't quite work. OK, there's one more thing I'd want to show you. OK. Which I think you're going to like. I now have my doubts, but I'm going to show you anyway. I love so you, follow me. I love you. <laughs> Karen seems to have made up her mind, but I still want to show them the space I had in mind for the business. Come on through. So as an office space, does this actually work for you? This, as the concept of what we said, is spot on. Standalone, it's, it's fantastic. I think you've got this exactly right. The huge downside is, is that we are not in love with that house. I really thought this beautiful, well-proportioned house with its large windows would do the trick. But nevertheless, we need to talk price. So how much do you think a house like this is currently on the market for? Um, I would say 749. 749, OK. Gary? I think it's going to be more like 785. Gary, you are closer. It's £1 under £800,000. Really? Yeah. 
Well, I know it's not the house of your dreams, but why don't you take a final wander around and I'll catch up with you in a minute? Sure. Okay, okay. yeah, we'll mm. have a quick look. Off you go. At just under 800,000, this house is a pound shy of their maximum budget. It has three reception rooms, six bedrooms, and a double garage with office space for the business. It's a new day on our house hunt here in the Cotswolds, and I think it's fair to say that Gary and Karen have very exacting demands. Nevertheless, I'm going to be showing them two very different properties today, both oozing character, so hopefully one of them's going to hit the spot. Our first house this morning is in Selslie, two miles south of Stroud. The village lies in beautiful countryside where the pace of life is slow. Nearby Stroud would offer Karen and Gary a greater range of independent shops and cafes. The next house is approached via a long gravel drive. It's much more contemporary, so fingers crossed they're going to like it. So here's your property. What's your immediate reaction? It's just different. It's, it's sort of a, a, a Cotswold stone with a contemporary twist. That's exactly what it is. I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> mm. I'm loving that wall. It really is very me. No, I, I like it. I'm, I'm intrigued to get inside, actually. Yeah? Mm. A new day has brought a fresh start, so let's hope this positivity continues inside. Come on in. I like this entrance. Yeah, it feels open. It feels light. <gasps> I like the fact that you can see the garden. Um, I like the floor. I mean, it's, a bit it's nice to have something a bit unexpected. You don't come in and expect to see the garden. Yes. So that's quite nice. Nice little feature. I can't mm. tell you how happy I am. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had my fingers crossed. We're on a winner so far. We're on a winner. On that note, we're going to keep moving forward into the kitchen. Which is an impressive size, I think you'll agree. Oh, and look at that view. Wow. That is beautiful. Well, it's got everything you want. I mean, how could you not like this kitchen? And I've noticed <sighs> behind us, sneaky look. Yes. Somewhere for our re big refectory table. So you've got plenty of space there. It's a nice practical island in the middle as well, not mm. just for the sake of it being there. So you'd happily sit on these stalls <laughs> for breakfast? Oh, gosh, yes. Could you imagine that? Nice cup a of tea in the morning. A few croissants, cup of tea. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever get up and go to work. That's it. I just would just sit there <laughs> for the whole day, just staring out at that view. It would just be absolutely fantastic. Jackpot, a kitchen they like. In addition, there's a utility room to hide away the white goods. And next, something a little bit unusual. So it's not often you can say, come through to the music room. <laughs> but Ooh. today, come through to your music room. You've got like a 180 degree view of your gardens. It's like a conservatory. I mean, I'm presuming this is not the lounge lounge. No. No, okay. I've got another reception room to show you, but I think you're right, it is like a conservatory, although yeah. it's completely incorporated into the main body of the house. So you could have a dining table or something and have this actually as an entertaining space. Mm. I think it would work fantastically well. Oh, it looks wicked well. as a dining area, yeah. I really do like this space. I love all the glass. It, it really works for me. Great. Well, you want to know where the sitting room is. Mm. That's actually on another level. And I know you like your stairs, Ooh. so follow me. To the left, there's a small study office. And in here, here's your sitting room. Our sofas and, and big pieces of furniture mm. would work really well. I really like that fireplace. Working fireplace, that's local stone as well. Okay. I, yeah, I like that. It's really yeah. simple but very elegant. I'm just not sure. I don't know what it is. I just, I, I, it's, my, my immediate reaction is just that there's something to do just with that wall that's just sort of mm. bothering me slightly. It almost feels that it's sort of coming down on you. Oppressive for you? A little bit, but it could be my claustrophobia. I'd probably need to go in and out a few times just to see if I, if I feel the same. Moving swiftly on, it's time to start the tour of the five bedrooms in this house. So up here... You have the guest bedroom, and it's also an ensuite. OK. It's just through there. And through here is the master bedroom. Got a little ensuite there, which works well. So this would be yours. My initial reaction is, I think this ceiling's too low okay. for me. Yeah. Um, I quite like the shape of this section here. You've got some storage there, and I've got to mention the shutters. 
I mean, beautifully done all mm. the way around. I like that sort of colonial feel mm. um, up here. Well, the shutters are approved, but the ceiling is too low. Will the rest of the house be able to win Karen over? The quirky nature of this property means the remaining three bedrooms are on the lower ground floor. So we're now in the lower part of the house. You've got a family bathroom there, another bedroom. But what I was originally thinking was this part could actually be converted into your office stroke storage room. But having seen the negativity upstairs, yes. you could actually convert this part into a master bedroom and put your guests upstairs. It would be nice to have, you know, to go out from your bedroom into a little patio area. That, that could be a nice feature. So there are options and it doesn't end there. Outside, the carport and garage could be converted for a large office and storage area for all Karen's materials. Round the corner, the wall garden has been beautifully landscaped. There's a manicured carpet of grass, a patio for alfresco dining and a little water feature too. Looking around this garden, it's really, it's just breathtaking and it's very rare that you see a garden of this standard. The garden is quite magnificent and it is a stunning house, which leads me to ask you, how much is it currently on the market for? I'm going to take a flyer and say it's on at about... 825. I'll stick, I'll say about 820. Well, Gary, you're closer. But it is actually on the market for £795,000, so 5000 under budget. OK. I'm surprised. <laughs> Are you? I am. Um, I think because of the garden, because the, of... The driveway's fantastic. It's got lots of unique features. And the space. There's an awful lot of space outside. Well, yeah. with that in mind, do you want to go and have another look? And I'll catch up with you in a minute. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This time, Karen and Gary overestimated the £795,000 price tag that accompanies this immaculate house. It has a large kitchen diner, five bedrooms, a carport and garage that could be converted into a business premises, and a beautifully maintained landscape garden. I feel I've gotten pretty close, but so far none of the properties I've showed Karen and Gary have quite hit the mark. So I've decided to throw them a curveball. Yes, it's the mystery property. And knowing their fondness for quirks, I've decided to show them something with plenty of Cotswold character and unique features in abundance. So we're on our way to the mystery property. This is where I always get very excited. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. But so what would you love to see? I'd love to see a um, nice detached property in the middle of a, its own little bit of land, no one overlooking us. Uh, Olympic sized swimming pool, George Clooney lives <coughs> on one side, Brad Pitt on the other. Fabulous. <laughs> it's time to reveal our mystery house. It's in Kelmscott, a short drive from Kelmscott Manor. Unfortunately, though, I'm not aware of celebrity neighbours. It's a quiet, peaceful village where nature sits on the doorstep of the attractive housing stock. It couldn't feel more different to their central London location. Our mystery property is a converted schoolhouse that is packed to the rafters with quirky features that hopefully will appeal to Karen and Gary's sense of fun. I love that bell. That's a sound that takes me back. <laughs> well, here is your mystery property. What are your first impressions? Like it, the Cotswold Stone. It's... It doesn't look too big, but I've got a feeling it's going to be bigger inside than it looks on the outside. It's going to be one of those houses. Yeah, first impressions, not too bad. So you ready to go inside and have a look? Yeah, yes, we definitely. are. Through into the hallway. Thank you. You can hang your coat up Ooh, there if you, you like. Yeah. So, Gary, what are your first impressions? It sort of looks a nice little cottage from outside, and that's the feel you get when you come in here. Okay, Karen? I don't like the entrance hall at all. It feels very small and enclosed and quite dark. It is dark. I mean, we've got mm. the door open, so we're getting a lot of light in, but sure. normally it would be a lot darker than this. And you've got the slate on the floor. I love that. I do like dark. that, yes. Well, at least that's something. Just off the hall to our right is the first of the four bedrooms in this house and the family bathroom too. Next stop is the lounge diner, but what will they make of it? Oh, no, no, my worst. 
nightmare. I hate spiral staircases. Oh, do you? I absolutely hate them. So what does a spiral staircase do for you? It's just really, it just breaks up a room in the most unpositive way. I'm going to have to hold your hand, aren't I? Because you're going to be going up there in a minute. <laughs> I'm going to take you away from that staircase, shield it with my body, <laughs> so that we can look at the rest of this room. I mean, it's a, it's a good reception room, isn't it? It's a good sitting room, this side. It's a nice size and, you know, plenty of windows and, and light coming in. Do you like the mullion windows, stone mullion? No, I do. Lovely. Yeah? Very yeah. nice. And you've got the wood burner there, which is a bit of a feature, but, you know, it could be a working fireplace as well, and it's um, obviously made of local stone. I love the hearth. I love the stone around the hearth. I think that's... that's. I think I'd sooner have it as a working fireplace, personally. Yeah. yeah. Immediately off the lounge is another bedroom, which has the beauty of dual aspect windows. But now it's time for Karen to face her fears and head up that spiral staircase. Now, just mind your head as you come up, because this is the master bedroom and also the ensuite. So you've got the master bedroom through there. And then here is your bathroom. Love the bathroom. The space is, is lovely. It's a, it's a complete contrast to downstairs. And this is something that yeah. I really like. It really does have a lovely feel up here. I like the space very much. Mm, Great. Works, works well. Good. Well, let's leave on a high. Karen, after you, we'll go down and see the kitchen. I thought this room couldn't fail to impress, but will it be enough? Quite a generous sized kitchen. No? No? Okay. <laughs> um, it's it's no, a fair it's, size. It is a fair sized kitchen. Yeah. No, I'm not going to disagree with you there. In proportion to the house. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. This kitchen just needs to be, in my opinion, just reconfigured to be, yeah. to be better utilised as a kitchen. Yeah, I mean, it's not, whilst I agree, it's not the biggest kitchen, but it's not a small kitchen. It's not that bad a size. Oh, are you going to let me have that one? I'll let you have that one. Thank you. Well, at least Gary is coming round to my way of thinking. Off the kitchen is a utility room which has access to the garage and just to the side is a second staircase that leads up to the final bedroom. Let's see what Karen thinks of it. I hate the ceilings. Too low, too cramped, too claustrophobic. You could probably take this higher, actually, mm. this thing to it. You've got a little ensuite here. And i tell you what they have put in, which I think is fantastic, the marble radiators. So it's a quirky it's quite nice, Yeah, it's quite mm. a nice touch. But again, if you have family to come to stay or friends and you wanted to keep them separately... <laughs> hide them away. <laughs> you could hide them in here and just make sure they're not very tall. And then because we are in the country and you have the most spectacular views, mm. they might decide that they don't want to go for a walk. They might decide they just want to appreciate it practically where they are. And if they did that, they'd just have to go through this door. How is that for a view? I love this. Oh, God. It's lovely. <laughs> no. Nikki, you surpassed yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's the perfect area for entertaining, for drinks in the evening. No, there's always, I don't know what it is, there's something about a balcony or a terrace that just makes you want to sit down, have a drink, and watch the world go by. Yeah. You've got the farmhouse there, you've got the cottages there. And you can actually watch the locals tending the vegetable patch there because that's all allotments. It's great. When you just turn a corner and you find something in a house that is so unexpected, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's great. At last, the tide has turned. The view from up here is great, but it's time to take a closer look at the garden as I have a surprise in store for them. Anybody for a sauna? <laughs> no. Yeah. It, and it's even got a radio and CD player here. <laughs> that is just the icing on the <laughs> cake. <laughs> well, that's put a smile on your face. Oh, it has. So let's talk money now. How much do you think it's currently on the market for? I would probably say six eighty. I'll say six nine five. Six nine five. Well, Gary, you're actually closer because this property is on the market for seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Really? That's yeah. That's remarkable. It's an it's expensive not, it's, part of the yeah. world. Sure. Yeah. So, do you both want to go and have another look around the property, and I'll join you on the way out? Okay. Okay. I'll see you in a minute. 
Karen and Gary substantially underestimated the value of this converted schoolhouse, which is on the market for £750,000. It has a kitchen breakfast room, three to four bedrooms with a large master ensuite, a roof terrace for soaking up the views and a sauna. At 50000 under budget, there's plenty of spare cash to move that spiral staircase and perhaps extend the kitchen. Karen and Gary's £800,000 budget isn't stretching as far as they'd imagined, so there are big decisions to be made. Well, it's certainly been a roller coaster few days with Karen and Gary. Now, there have been some highs, there have also been some spectacular lows, but it's time now to find out what they think about those properties and whether this part of the country is really going to be right for them. So, Karen and Gary, what an entertaining few days we've had. <laughs> now, the first property we saw was in Chalford. It was the Georgian house with the Victorian extension. It was stunning. It was everything that you would imagine a house to be in the Cotswolds. I think the entrance hall, for me, was, was a little bit of a letdown. I was expecting something a lot grander because of the, fr the, the front of the house was so wide and the building was so imposing. And then you open that front door and it's just such a tiny hallway it just it didn't seem to fit with a house at all I it flowed nicely oh, yeah it? it did flow it had a feel of being a home which which was a big plus let's talk about the property in nailsworth grade two listed georgian house how was that for you i think we both really liked the front of the building and obviously there was a very nice outbuilding but when we went through i think we both felt again that the inside of the entrance just let the house down. I almost have that instant like-dislike. I think we got that. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've looked at a lot of properties made of that stunning Cotswold stone, but this time we looked at a new build in Salesley. What did you think about that one? Although it was a new build, the entrance was pretty impressive because it had a, a, that Grade 2 listed um, wall surrounding the whole property, and the garden was fantastic. You really liked that house, didn't you? Um, you? I like, I like, for a new build, they've done a very good job, I'd have to say. But would it be fair to say that we got close with that property? Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. I think so, yeah. It was, it was beautifully done. There was certainly enough space outside to make a very nice studio. So we have to finish with the mystery property in Kelmscott. It was a nice property, but just not for us. The staircase... Um, the staircase. The staircase. Oh. The staircase. How can we forget the staircase? We can't, really. <laughs> um, the sun deck was fantastic. I yeah. love that. Um, and I also love the bathroom. It just seemed like it belonged somewhere else. It would be nice to have got the property from our perspective and got it in its raw state. We have seen some stunning properties. I know for various reasons they haven't been right. But, you know, what's the next step for you two? I think we'll have to sort of go away and perhaps either rethink our budget mm. Mm. Um, because the outside space is so very important to us. Yeah, we've either got to, you know, rethink the budget or... Our requirements. You know, change our requirements. Uh, for, for or a bit of both. I am sorry we didn't manage to find your dream property. You tried. We did try. Well, mm. you probably have. It's just that they were all mixed up in different properties. If you could amalgamate probably two of them, you probably would have had a dream house. Yeah. Well, we've certainly got you thinking. Mm, you have. And thank you again, as I say, and we wish you all the very best with your continued search. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank, thank you. Thank it's you. Been great. It's been an interesting journey and a real eye-opener with a few surprises along the way. Clearly, the Cotswolds is where Karen and Gary want to find their new home. It's also a smart move for Karen's business. Now, to find exactly what they're after, I think they may have to up their budget. But something tells me with their vision, they'll eventually find that dream home. And the latest from Karen and Gary is that they have decided to stay put in London and rent a studio space for Karen's business until they decide their next step.